Welcome to the American Research Center in Egypt's fifth episode in our series, A History of Egyptology. This series explores the West's nearly 2,000 year fascination with ancient Egypt. Its goal is to highlight how ancient Egypt has impacted different peoples throughout the ages and how it continues to do so. Our story thus far has explored aspects of Western interest in Egypt from the time of the ancient Greeks up to the 20th century. This episode continues the story, focusing on the birth of the American Research Center and the U.S. fascination with all things ancient Egyptian. By the early 1900s, a significant amount of information had been uncovered about the ancient land of the Nile. This was partly due to the progress made in reading hieroglyphs, and partly the result of extensive archaeological work throughout the country. One important publication to the study of ancient Egypt, known as the Topographical Bibliography, appeared in the 1920s. This work, the brainchild of Francis Llewellyn Griffith, and realized by Bertha Porter and Rosalind Moss, presented maps, plans, and bibliographies of monuments, as well as descriptions and locations of their corresponding texts and scenes. It remains an invaluable and continually updated tool for researchers to this day. In addition, the early 20th century saw the publication of seminal grammars, dictionaries, and collections of texts. The archaeological finds of the century were no less important. The most famous discovery came in 1922, when Howard Carter uncovered the tomb of the boy king, Tutankhamun. The discovery sent shockwaves around the world, as new technologies, like photography and film, were used to share the golden treasures of Tut in manners never before imagined. But people were fascinated by more than just Tut's coffins, furniture, and jewelry. Stories of the mummy's curse spread like wildfire after the death of Lord Carnarvon, benefactor of Howard Carter. And speculation of murder and political intrigue sprang out of Tutankhamun's association with the heretic king Akhenaten and his beautiful queen Nefertiti. These images and stories created a new wave of Egyptomania that swept the globe. The discovery of King Tut's tomb, for example, helped to fuel the Art Deco movement in the U.S., and from the 1920s onwards, Egyptian motifs could be found in everything from architecture to jewelry to home goods. The West's fascination with Egypt, spurred on by Tut mania, continued right through the Second World War. This interest partly fueled the creation of Arsi, which was formally established in a meeting in Boston on May 14, 1948. The meeting was the culmination of a growing sense in the years immediately following the war that a North American scholarly presence was needed in Egypt. While leading American archaeological institutions had conducted major excavations in Egypt in the early 20th century, there was no central office in Cairo to serve these institutions. RC was formally incorporated in 1950, and our Cairo Center was opened in 1951 in a small space within the U.S. Office of Information and Educational Exchange. The founding members of RC understood that in the post-war era, Americans were in urgent need of greater knowledge of the ancient, medieval, and modern Arab world. The most dramatic 20th century example of American commitment to exploring and preserving Egyptian heritage occurred with the 1960s UNESCO campaign to save monuments threatened by the rising waters of the newly created Lake Nasser. In 1959, after plans to construct the Aswan High Dam were unveiled, an international campaign was launched to save endangered Egyptian and Nubian monuments south of Aswan. The best-known monuments saved during this campaign are the temples of Abu Simbel, which, between 1964 and 1968, were dismantled and reassembled on higher ground. As a gift of thanks for the role American assistance played in the salvage campaign, Egypt gave the Temple of Dendor to the United States. It can be seen today in New York's Metropolitan Museum of Art, and it even made a cameo appearance in the film when Harry met Sally. American interest in ancient Egypt remains strong, as seen by the number of universities offering Egyptology courses, 
by the number of American tourists who visit the country every year, and by the countless TV documentaries and books bought by Americans on ancient Egypt. As we enter the 21st century, RC is proud to continue leading the charge to explore and preserve Egypt's ancient heritage. American contributions to the exploration and preservation of Egypt's cultural history can be found throughout the country, addressing prehistoric, pharaonic, Roman, Christian, and Islamic sites. If you'd like to learn more about Egypt and support RC's mission, why not explore becoming a member?